Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at how we can harness uh, the new features of Unreal with Lumen uh, to be able to use our emissives as lighting, basically, right? Uh, which, because of course, because of everything going dynamic, it now becomes super expensive. But we can actually, for literally almost no cost, use emissive lighting in order to fill up the darkness of our scenes. So with that being said, let's get right into it. Okay, so here we are in a scene that I'm currently working on, and you can see here that there is a light in the center. Now, you might think that this is actually a point light, but this is actually a giant emissive sphere. Now, how can we get the effect in order to have the emissive being able to not only be hidden from view, but also affecting our scene? So, you can see here that I'm moving it back and forth, and it's giving us the, the lighting up and down and back and forth. And you can see that it's working. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new uh, material that's going to be set up to be able to allow us to have the object as hidden. So uh, with that being said, let's create a new one. So in my materials folder, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new emissive material. So with that, I'm going to make one. I'm going to call this just uh, emissive demo. And inside of it, uh, let's open it up and let's go through the steps of making this, you know, a typical emissive. So first and foremost, what we're going to want to do is we're going to change the shading mode to unlit uh, because this is going to be emitting light and we don't necessarily want it to uh, be you know, getting light or having any reflections and stuff like that off of it. Uh, it's not that type of material. So with that done, um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a uh, constant three vector and we're going to just promote it. Let's call it color. And then we're also going to add a multiply and also a scalar, right? So in the scalar, uh, let's call this, um, say, emissive intensity. And there we go, right? So very simple for this. However, uh, I also want to add in um, a couple things to allow me to, say, adjust the color temperature of this, uh, of this light. So uh, what I'm going to want to do, just like other lights, is that uh, I'm going to add the option of using Calvin or you know, color temperature. To do that, uh, we're going to want to grab this thing called the black body node. And this black body node allows us to access the temperature of a certain object. So I'm just gonna promote this to a per, uh, parameter and let's just call it temperature and I'm just going to keep it there, but I'm going to give it a default value of 5,500. And the reason why is because uh, whether it's uh, 5,600 or 5,500, this is typically a default value for color or white balance in um, an outdoor scene. So now with this, uh, if we preview it, you can see that if I set this really low, it goes red. And when it goes a lot more intense, it becomes more blue. And that's actually just typically how it works because when something burns hotter than, um, you know, burns hotter, it turns blue. Whereas if it burns at a lower temperature, it's more red. So, um, however, the thing is, is that if we plug this in right now, this will actually be driving uh, the emissive intensity. Um, so if we just put that in, uh, that's not exactly what we want. We want to use this thing called a normalized node in order to make sure it's clamped between the, those values. So I'm just going to normalize it. Uh, so that way it's between zero and one. And if we look at that, it will make it normal. Uh, if that's wrong, I apologize, but that's my understanding of it. Uh, however, what we're going to do now is that we're just going to multiply the color by the normalized uh, black body, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to just input it into the multiply here, and then we're going to put that into the emissive. So you can see here is if I adjust this to say 3200, 
right? It will take on more of a warm tone. Uh, whereas if I go to say 6500, it's more blue. Right? So uh, let's go 55. And we're nearly done. But the next thing we're going to want to do, uh, just because I don't want to have to make a whole bunch of these emissives uh, for, for these cards, is I'm going to just right click on say the color and I'm going to actually use this node uh, option here called custom primitive data. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to enable it and you can see here now it's using primitive index of zero to three. And we're just going to want to repeat these steps for both the temperature and the uh, intensity. So with this, I'm going to go to the use custom primitive data and I'm going to add this to four so it appears after um, the, uh, the color. And under the emissive intensity, I'm gonna add the use custom primitive data. Now uh, with that, I'm gonna set this one to five so it appears underneath all of them. And we're just gonna hit apply. So next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is, let me just delete this sphere and add a new one. Okay, so with it in our scene, let's uh, go ahead and apply this emissive demo to it. And we don't need to make a, you know, its own little material for it, or instance, I should say. And what we're going to do is that in our details panel, we're going to scroll down until we get to our rendering section where it shows our custom primitives. And inside you can see that it actually shows us our color our temperature and our emissive intensity. Well, I'm just gonna hit the plus symbol on the add element. And you can see here now we have our values that we actually have inside of our, um, our material. And in here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase the value. And you can see here, obviously, like the scene's being lit now because it's now being considered a light source. Um, and what I'm going to do, just because I have a color temperature of 3200 or 3500, I'm just going to set it to 32. And so that way it appears more white. And from here, I'm just going to increase the intensity just a bit to say 35, 350. There we go. And now, like obviously if I hide things, it's still there. So the next step that we need to do is we need to go ahead and move up to our options underneath lighting. First, what we're going to do is that we're going to enable uh, the emissive light source uh, just so that it's be, it knows you know it's a flag and that it's using it. So I'm going to just hit that on. And then the next one, you can actually see it here, is this effect indirect lighting while hidden. So before I turn this on, watch what happens when I add the actor hidden in game. Right? Oh, did I hit it? No, I did not. I hit it on something one sec. Maybe I did that on another one. So I'm gonna hit oh actor hidden in game. And now you can see that we're not getting any lighting. But now watch what happens when we enable the effect indirect lighting. Boom. Look at that. It's showing up. Now, one thing is that you'll want to use this with uh, a console variable. And the reason why is because if you don't, you're going to get these weird shadows, uh, which are caused by screen traces, right? So these screen traces are going to be looking at our, our distance fields, and it kind of gives us this wonky shadow. So what uh, you can use in order to get this looking right is that you can use the um, Lumen Screen Pro Gather Screen Traces. And if you set this to zero, it disables screen traces for uh, the screen probes. So uh, with this, and this is allows us to use this as uh, indirect lighting. And you know we can quickly start adding things to our scene uh, in order to make this this work really well. Um, as you can see right now through the demo uh, that's going on in the background. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much the tutorial. 
So uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope that helped you guys out and was insightful. Um, if you're a first time viewer, please consider subscribing and liking this video. I am trying to grow this channel to 5,000 subscribers and I would really appreciate it. Um, stay tuned for some more. I'm hoping to upload another video pretty soon. Uh, multiple times a week is what I'm trying to do right now. Um, but until the next video, uh, have a great day everyone. Take care.